call this meeting to order. Mr. Paulson, call the roll. Ames. Here. Corker. Here. Florima. Here. Gray. Here. Neal. Patrick. Kroll. Here. Tatman. Here. Trutchell. Here. I invite you to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tap. Yes. Trucho. Yes. The minutes will stand as submitted. Reports of committees. Mrs. Gray. Thank you, President Leonardo. The Human Resources Committee would like to acknowledge the receipt of legislation request. 15-124 is a request for legislation authorizing the mayor to enter into contract with the city to accompany health insurance the calendar year 2016. There will be a meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, the 13th of October at 3.30 p.m. in the first floor conference room of the administration building to discuss the legislation. Information has been sent out to council as well as to the law director's office and a request is pending there, pending discussion and recommendation by the committee. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Mr. Trudgell. Thank you, President Eleonardo. The Finance Committee has two items on tonight's agenda. Item four is to appropriate $45,000 for computer-related expenses for the Chillicothe Municipal Court. This is all court money. It will come from Municipal Court uh, computers other and be uh, transferred to municipal court computers outside contracts. So that, none of that money comes out of the general fund. That's all money that is within the municipal court. Item 5 is to appropriate the sum of $4,000 received as security as a result of a structure fire at 779 Wash Street Avenue. Uh, the owners of this property had to put up that money to the city, and we have to return that money to them now with the structure we can take care of. And that concludes our report. Mr. Thank you, President Eleonardo. Uh, well, first off, I'd like to excuse Beth Neal and Pat Patrick. <coughs> Seconded by Ms. Gray. We'll call on a motion to excuse uh, Councilwoman Neal and Councilwoman Pat. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patton. Yes. Tasha. Yes. The motion has passed. All right, and since Beth is not here, Beth Neal is not here tonight, uh, she asked me to uh, read some of her uh, items, and the first thing is uh, the units of $20,000 for salt. Uh, I passed it out to all the uh, council people, and so I'd like to waive the three-day receipt rule on that one. Motion has been waived uh, to waive the three-day receipt, and seconded by Mr. Trudgell. We'll call on the motion. Ames. Yes. Corporate. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Crutcher. Yes. The motion has passed. And at a later time, I will ask to uh, wait the three people on that one. And since uh, Pat Patrick's not here tonight, uh, she had number, item number one on tonight, and it's concerning the junk and abandoned vehicles. She wanted to make sure that. I mentioned that. It's up for third read, so we hopefully will pass that tonight. Also, number six is uh, Pat's concerning uh, ODOT, Ohio Public Transportation uh, grant, uh, grant Program, and at the uh, appropriate time, she requested that we waive the three reads today. Receive, or, I'm sorry, three read rule on that one. I'll get it straight. All right, now, engineering committee. Uh, we have number item number two on tonight, and it's finally the third read on the 10-year easement agreement with the Chilcotty Civic Theater. 
at 83 South Walnut Street, and I hope for a, uh, a passing of that tonight. And I also have uh, number three, and I request, request not to read that tonight. comment tonight that's on issue item number four which is related to the um, municipal court the money they need for their computers um, I don't know if they said that they needed to pass tonight but there's there's a little bit of question on if, if this is all outside contracts or if there's actual computer hardware being purchased um, at least large was out of the office at the end of last week and we weren't able to clarify that um, if it can wait and pass on second read, you might be able to avoid some, some headache. Okay. That's fine. That's all I've got. Thank you, sir. Ooh, come on, Director Rutherford. Oh, thank you, President Aldenar. Our job. <laughs> <laughs> Madam President. <laughs> Oh, wow. All right. On July 15, 2015, my office was notified by the Attorney General's Office of a settlement between Martin Salt and Cargill, Inc. over sales of rock salt to public purchasers in Ohio between July 2008 and June 2011. I filed a claim on behalf of the city on July 22nd and recently received a check payable to the city in the amount of $2,813.49 which constitutes the city's proportionate share of the settlement. A committee assignment to accept and appropriate the funds for the purchase of the salt has been requested. And that is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to now open the floor for audience participation. A reminder that you need to um, step to the podium, give your name and address. Please limit your topic to five or your, your speaker to five minutes and your topic to 15. Who would like to address council this evening? Good evening. My name is Elsie Glandon. I live at 101 South Watt Street in Chillicothe. I've lived here for 57 years on Watt Street. I have helped in everything that makes it uh, Chillicothe a beneficial place to live. We started from early part, uh, Patton Park. Comes up. Everything has happened in Chillicothe in those 57 years. I've always worked hard and I've promoted Chillicothe for years. And I can't sleep or anything for the trucks on my street. And then for 56 years, it was a quiet, gentle street. And now I feel like I'm on the interstate. And I, I, I have talked to, tried to talk to Green and Dave, but they said he didn't have anything to do with it. And I only talked to him once, and I have called many, many times to Green's office, and he's never at stands. Nobody's ever at the And so I decided to come here. And I told him that uh, 
said that they had the signs to change. They took down the truck sign on Watt Street at Main and Walk. They took that truck sign down and they put one up on 7th Street that said uh, for 50 traffic, you know, trucks to go uh, at Eastern Avenue. I draw the little map and I wanted, it's just the thing I thought might help you come to a conclusion about this where that they could go down Eastern Avenue and go off, uh, you know, go uh, Watt Street to Eastern Avenue and out to all trucks to go to 23, 50 and 35 could go that way and it wouldn't wake up the dead or bother them at all. They, they wouldn't hear it. And on the Red Street, they wouldn't hear anybody hear it either. And every night at 3 and 4 o'clock, they make trucks of this one. Like when they hit the railroad track and then they hit those places of the, that the gas company made, and they're just, it's just like that. And my picture's on the walls. Every one of us crooked. I can't keep them straight. I can't talk on the phone with the door open. You can't answer your door from the trucks. You have to wait until they pass, and then you can talk. And like I say, I, I've lived there 57 years, I don't want to die there. So I want each one of you to think, and, and you know, your heart, would you want to live that way for the rest of your life, to hear those trucks? And if you was out on the interstate, it can be any more noisy. And I just asked you look, all to think about that, and look at this and see how easy, what a good thing it would be, you know, to put the traffic that way. There are several there, and if you'll give them, I don't want them to skip them to them and let them see, you know, what you got. Oh, my name. You got it, you got it. I don't know. I'll look it right again. But I really would appreciate your consideration, and like I say, I, I have always tried to make sure a copy. Everywhere I go, I tell them we've got the potential for the greatest city in America, and I really believe that. And I've always strived to make it that way. Uh, we are carvers, my son's a carver. We've had stuff sitting in the Oval Office as president. Our stuff has been in France, people standing in the Bob of Tower with our work. And we always promote Chillicothe and tell them what a great city we are. And I, I really love this town. <laughs> I, when I go fight, I really love it. <laughs> some other streets in, in, in that area and actually feed them on the block streets. So I'm going to have to get the city engineer talking about it. Who's this? That day? That's right. Sunday. Well, he told me he didn't have anything to do with that when I talked about it. Yeah, thanks to you. I told him they'd give me a screwdriver. I'd get my wheelchair when I had the leg for him and not go change them signs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I really would appreciate all your council people if you think about that because it's my life and it's five minutes so it's truckers' time to go around, you know. And, and take all of them down. I don't have no life. And I really would appreciate you thinking about it. <coughs> public meeting to discuss this. I'm right for many times. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to address council? Mr. Davis. My name is uh, Alan Davis. I live at 370 Braidwood. Um, I wanted to come and talk a little bit about the city's finances. Um, something I've talked about in the past. Uh, I hope people uh, don't interpret this as being critical of what they've done. I know the last few years have been very difficult times for the city financially and all, but um, I've been a little concerned that there hasn't been much discussion about uh, the future of the city finances in the mayor's race or in the city council races, because from my uh, understanding, we still have a lot left to do. Um, we are uh, very quickly, if not currently, under the financial health indicators. So I handed out a package that shows what each of those 16 are. I also gave you the links because there's no real explanation um, to them. But they, uh, 
um, a, a link where you can go out to the state auditor's site and you can see, you know, uh, much more complete and an explanation of why each one of these is important. Um, in there it says that if uh, we fail or are, get a critical rating on six of the 16, then we will um, be monitored for physical stress or a combination of um, eight critical and negative, then we would be tested for physical stress. So I think it would be important for the city to go through the process of um, uh, actually calculating out what we uh, would um, accomplish on these or the rating on these so we could have an understanding of where we stand. Um, there were seven of them that I could do just from information I had and those were ones that primarily with the general fund balance. And of those, three would be critical, two would be negative, and one of those negatives allowed, if it's a low percentage, you get critical, so I really think we'd be a fourth critical there. The other nine, it's difficult to know because, again, some of it's a little more accounting, uh, um, <clears throat> and uh, you need the financial statements themselves. So it looks like we're in pretty... Uh, close to being in the, in the position where this uh, state auditor's office would actually um, uh, go the next step. One of them, unassigned fund balance of the general fund, or yeah, of the general fund, number two, we're actually pretty close on that too. If you, 2013, our general fund balance was, at the end of the year was 902,000. 2014, it was just under 800,000. In 2015, at the financial review, it's, it was projected to be 800,000, but there was 196,000 that needed. It was question of whether that would be appropriated out of it. That would drop it to 600. So that would be two years where we had had decreasing balances. If you have a third, that then uh, qualifies for a negative score. And next year's budget is going to be a real tough one because we have 27 payrolls, we're opening two fire stations, we're increasing the police, we have uh, city service equipment that needs to be purchased. I mean, so it, um, <clears throat> the question is, can we actually uh, keep from having a decrease again? Um, but if we were to have a third decrease, it will impact financial indicator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 12, and uh, 13 and 14. So a lot of these are interrelated and we need to um, understand that. So I would just uh, uh, suggest that as you go into the budget process and before you approve a budget, that you ought to uh, have a good, clear understanding of how we uh, uh, have stacked up over the last three to five years on these financial health indicators and, um, and then uh, take into consideration that uh, you know, which ones we're in uh, 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 a bad situation on as you go through the budget process. Um, this may be more technical than uh, what, I mean, even for me, this uh, some of this stuff is pretty technical, but I know the state auditor's office has people that would be glad to uh, help and assist in there. Uh, <clears throat> this is in no way a comment on our current uh, auditor. Uh, one of the things that I would uh, highly uh, commend him for, for uh, doing was stopping the uh, practice in the budget of using carry forward to determine whether a budget was balanced. That was the best thing that happened for the city's finances in the last, well, since I've been uh, paying attention to the finances. So, uh, city auditor, thank you for that. And uh, But I do think we need to get a, a clear handle of where, where we stand on these and what we can do to um, make that better. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Anyone else wish to address <coughs> council this evening? There's one other thing I'd like to say. I don't know how much credit you council people get, but Pat Patrick is the best lady I've ever dealt with in 57 years. She works hard, she cares, and she's really interested, and I hope the rest of you that I don't know you, but I, I really hope you're not okay because she's wonderful, and I just wanted to, to give her a little praise because she's really having a hard time. <laughs> so, we agree with you. She's a good person. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay, that takes us to old business. Anyone have old business they wish to discuss? Mrs. Ames. Thank you, Ms. President Alvarado, I'm sorry, Sherry Um I mentioned this last week, and I just wanted to mention again this week, light the park. Uh, we're taking donations for the Christmas lights in the park. Uh, we need to fund this, and we wanted to make some improvements this year to it. Donations can be made to First Capital District at the Chamber, 45 East Main. They are tax deductible. First Capital is 501c3, and any amount of donation would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ames. Other old business? Seeing none, that takes us to petitions and correspondence. Mr. President, Delvin, I have nothing to report. And you don't know I do. <laughs> New business. This is going to be a short meeting. Okay. No new business. Is there, are there additional committee assigned, um, additional committee meetings scheduled that we need to announce? All right. And that takes us to legislation. Third reading of an ordinance amending sections 359.02, 359.03, 359.06, 359.07, and 359.99 of the codified ordinances of the City of Chillicothe, Ohio. Third reading. Roll call. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Brema. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Tatchell. Yes. yes. That ordinance passes. <coughs> Item number two. Third reading of an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Chillicothe, Ohio, to execute any and all documents in connection with granting a renewable 10-year easement to the Chillicothe Civics Theater Incorporated for use at 83 South Walnut Street and declaring an emergency. Third reading. Roll call. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Lorema. Yes. Great. Yes. Roll. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Ordinance passes. Item number three will not be read. <coughs> Item number four. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $45,000 for computer-related expenses for the Chillicothe Municipal Court and declaring an emergency. First reading. Item five. First reading of an ordinance appropriating the sum of $4,000 received as security as the result of a structure fire at 779 Washington Avenue, Chillicothe, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. First read. Mr. Trutchell. I didn't bring it up in my uh, presentation. However, I would like to wait to be re There's no sense of a study on this money. Seconded by Mrs. Ames. Roll we'll call on the motion to wait for three read. Ames. Yes. Corporate. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tatton. Yes. Tatchell. Yes. That motion carries and roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corporate. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Tatchell. Yes. Ordinance passes. Item number six. First reading of a resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Chillicothe to submit an application proposal with the Ohio Department of Transportation for grants through the United States Department of Transportation Federal Transit Administration as authorized under federal transit laws for funds from the Ohio Public Transportation Grant Program accepting such grant and executing a contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation upon grant proposal acceptance and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Chapman. At this time, I'd like to request that we wait the three people. Seconded by Mr. Florino. Roll call on the motion to wait the three. Ames. Yes. Corbin. Yes. Florino. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the resolution. Ames. Yes. Corbin. Yes. Florino. Yes. Gray. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Resolution here is passed. Item number seven. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $20,000 to purchase road salt per the summer fill salt program contract and declare an emergency. First reading. Mr. Chapman. At this time, I'd like to request that we wait for the re-rule. Re Seconded by Mrs. Ames. 